Microbiology is section 19. Um, we'll continue on the DNA of viruses. And um, I'm going to discuss the adenoviruses, uh, Papova viruses, and Parvo viruses. So that's the, um, the map, and th these are the three. Remember that um, Parvo viruses are uh, um, non enveloped, but it is the only single stranded DNA viruses that you need to know for, for the exam. So, starting with the adeno and uh, Papova viruses, the adeno uh, virus cause the Pharyngitis, pneumonia, conjunctivitis, and gastroenteritis. Uh, Papova virus is under this one. We have the uh, uh, papilloma virus, the famous papilloma virus. We have a lot of questions on this. Polyoma virus, I'm going to tell you about the progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy in HIV patient. That's very important to know. Starting with the adenovirus, for the sake of the exam, acute pharyngitis, conjunctivitis like pink eye. Um, with um, um, the signs of um, non-purulent conjunctivitis is adenovirus. It can cause he hemorrhagic cystitis and um, the uh, gastroenteritis usually in the children with the uh, non-bloody diarrhea, and that's adeno 40, 41, and 31. The, that's the second most common cause of diarrhea in infants after rotavirus. It is a question? Yes, it is. What is the most common cause of diarrhea in infants? It is rotavirus. What is the second most common cause of diarrhea in infants is adenovirus. What is the strains? 40, 41, and 31. Is this clear? The diagnosis with serology, and remember that live virus vaccine is available, but not giving, uh, but only giving to the military and will prevent respiratory illness uh, type, which is basically adenotype 4 and 7. So why we don't give, the question is, why we don't give this vaccine to the children to prevent the diarrhea? The answer is, this is not against adeno 40, 41, and 31, okay? It is specifically for respiratory, not for diarrhea, and that's for the military people. I'm stressing on these things because that's the way that you will be asked about the virus. So look at this scenario, Out, outbreak of keratoconjunctivitis, like painful eye with redness of the conjunctiva and watery discharge in a group of patients, maybe in a nursing home or a daycare, and they ask you, what is the reason? Select the adenovirus, okay? Why I put cyclophosphamide here? You know why? Because the word hemorrhagic cystitis, what is the cycloph cyclophosphamide has nothing to do with this virology discussion. Cyclophosphamide is immunomodulatory medication used in several kinds of conditions such as systemic lupus and other uh, connective tissue disease. Um, so why I put this here? Because one of the side effects of cyclophosphamide is hemorrhagic cystitis, that's yearly when you use the medicine. I just put it here to connect this together. The uh, um, uh, papova viruses, we have papilloma virus and we have the uh, polioma viruses. So I'm gonna start with the papilloma virus. It can cause the common um, wart or genital wart or cervical cancer. And I'm sure that you have seen this a lot, the common wart, which is, we call it verruca vulgaris, and the lower strains like two and four uh, is the cause. This appear in, in a few months and uh, it may last for years and can recur. Uh, podophyllum is one of the treatments, acidic acid with scratulitic uh, or cryosurgery like freezing with liquid nitrogen can be used for this condition. You guys remember I talked about another uh, condylometer. What is the other condylometer that I talked about it and in association with which infection? Condylometa lata, which is one of the signs of secondary syphilis. This is condylometa acuminata, which is a genital wart associated with human papilloma virus, and 90% of this are related to uh, strain 6 and 11. However, 
the high restraint 16, 18, 31, 33 are the cause of cervical cancer and how do you diagnose possible cervical cancer caused by or associated with papilloma virus? You got a colposcopy and biopsy or with the PCR or you apply 1% acetic acid and will turn the lesion white. So what does it mean? You examine vaginal exam and you put the speculum and you look at the cervix, you put 1% acetic acid if you suspect that there is a lesion like cervical cancer or infection with the papillomavirus that might cause the problem, the lesion will turn white. Again, cryotherapy is a um, good uh, line of treatment. However, 50% will resolve without treatment, but you have to be careful with which type of papillomavirus is there. What is the difference between condylometa, acuminata, and lata? I'm not going to repeat it. We know this very well now, so we're not going to uh, miss the difference between lata, secondary syphilis, con uh, and acuminata. Um, um, that's the um, genital area. Uh, infection with, uh, with uh, human papilloma virus. Look at this. <laughs> this is <coughs> important to remember. Um, the higher uh, strains are for the cervical cancer. The middle is basically um, uh, for the condylometa acuminata, the lower for the wart. Uh, we have a human papilloma virus vaccine which is available to prevent. Look at this. Um, the strain 6, 11, 16, and 18. If you ask it, someone or young lady who has the, the vaccine will be completely safe uh, from developing uh, cervical cancer. The answer is no, because some of the strains are not covered by the uh, vaccine. Infection of the epithelial tissue uh, with the human papilloma virus will develop this kind of abnormal uh, epithelial cells with the perinuclear clearing. We call it coleocytes and nuclear enlargement and um, look at the nucleus, it is enlarged and there is what we call it perinuclear clear area and this is potentially precancerous to the cervical area and that's basically by definition is the dysplasia, okay? That summary of what we talked about it before regarding the strains of papilloma virus. So the uh, my, microorganisms inducing cancer, since we are talking about the papilloma virus inducing the um, um, cervical cancer, uh, herpes virus type 8, Kaposi sarcoma, Epstein-Barr virus, Barkett's lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, the uh, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, if it is chronic infection and not eradicated, will end up with um, liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Helicobacter pylori that I talked about it yesterday is a cause of which kind of gastric cancer? H. pylori will cause which kind of ca gastric cancer? Malt lymphoma. Malt lymphoma, which is one type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, the early stages will be um, resolved if you treat the H. pylori with the antibiotic. So that's a strange question. Treat with antibiotic to treat lymphoma. Okay, don't select uh, chemotherapy. Chistosoma hematobium is a uh, cause of bladder cancer. Which kind of bladder cancer associated with chistosoma hematobium? Squamous cell, not transitional cell carcinoma. Why? Because the patient who is infected with chistosoma hematobium will have, previous to the malignancy, will have squamous metaplasia meaning changing the transitional cell epithelium of the, of the bladder into squamous cell. Then the malignancy is going to get on top of the squamous cell. It's going to be squamous cell carcinoma. Polyoma virus. That's the cause of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. And the, the specific virus under polyoma virus is the JC. And the infection, look at this, is usually during childhood. And the virus will prol proliferate when the immunity is suppressed, particularly with HIV patients. And it's going to be latent and sitting dormant in the central nervous system, okay? 
Then the patient gets immunity suppression with chemotherapy, organ transplant, HIV patient. For the sake of the exam, most probably it's going to be HIV patient. The virus will reactivate. Look at this. It's going to invade the oligodendrocytes of the CNS. And um, that's why it's going to involve the white matter. And that's why we call, we call it leuco. Leuco means white. So progressive, multifocal, leucoencephalopathy, because of the question on the exam is going to be the virus. Is acute infection? No. It's a, during childhood. Where it's going to be dormant in the central nervous system. In immunity suppressed, the patient would get pro, pro, proliferation of the, of the virus. And then it's going to affect which cells, oligodendrocytes, which part, the white part. And that's why we call it the leukoencephalopathy. Look for a young patient with HIV who developed signs of dementia early. They will give you 38 years old the patient with dementia who has HIV and he has this white matter problem and in like impaired coordination and a speech disorder. There is no treatment available, but believe me, you will get this 100% on your exam. And the question could be either one that I talked about. What is the cells affected? What part of the, the brain affected? When the infection happened during childhood? Which patient? HIV, etc. Okay? This is the not all the what we need to know. Here is the trick. They will give you a scenario that's very obvious that this is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, and they might tell you up front that the patient has been diagnosed with this. And you know what is the question? They will tell you, what is the family that this virus belongs to? Silly question, is that right? But that's what we need to know. Papova viridi is the family that this virus is belonging to, okay? Why I put this here, and I'm going to talk about it in the central nervous system again, because these are um, um, problems in the central nervous system. I don't want you to mix this together. So progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, we talked about it and, it, and it's affecting oligodendrocytes. What about the subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, the third one down here? It is due to defective measles infection. So it is viral related. And they have to tell you that this guy has measles infection during childhood. Once you see this patient who has personality disorder, seizures, monoclonus, select subacute sclerosing uh, panencephalitis. Okay? The other one is um, a Crutzfeldt Jacob disease which is caused by a prion infection. And the prion is an a, a agent with no even nucleic acid. And um, the long incub incubation, uh, incubation period, like four years, will cause CNS degeneration, like a spongy form encephalopathy with progressive dementia, ataxia, and um, monoclonus. Symptoms are very close to each other. However, they have to give you hint like prion infection or um, 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 early childhood infection in HIV patients affecting oligodendrocytes or measles, um, effective measles virus infection. Okay, so we're done with the <clears throat> adeno and papova viruses. The last one is the parvoviruses, and I have, I have specific questions on parvoviruses I, I want you to, to remember. This is one of them. Diffuse erysema and edema with slabbed face in a child. This is straightforward. This is very easy. This is what is the condition, what is the causative microorganism. This is erysema infectiosum, parvovirus B19. That's a straightforward. We know this. Okay. What about the other question that I want you to remember? If they want to ask you about adult who is immunocompetent, like young lady who, um, who uh, developed or got the infection with parvovirus B19, how this is going to present on the exam this way? They will give you the scenario that's going to be deceiving scenario because they will give you the scenario that looks like rheumatoid arthritis because they will tell you this young lady has small joint ache and pain and knee and wrist and feet 
and they will give you the touch on the scenario that this is rheumatoid arthritis, but it is not. How do you know that this is not? One word, they will tell you that this young lady has kids in a daycare. So they bring this infection to her, and she's getting the parvovirus B19. In the meantime, she might have low bit of fever and the adenopathy. So a, a kid in a daycare is the hint for parvovirus B19. The second question is going to be this. Someone who has history of hemolytic anemia, whatever the hemolytic anemia, sickle cell anemia, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, give you any scenario in someone who has hemolytic anemia in his history, and now he's infected with parvovirus B19, what is going to happen to this patient? He's going to get what we call it a plastic crisis. What do you mean by a plastic crisis? A plastic anemia for just short time, four to six months, not for the rest of their life. Okay? So that's the question. The, the, the fourth one is if the patient is immunocompromised, meaning HIV-infected patient, and he got infected with parvovirus B19 on top of the HIV that he has, he's going to get what we call it red blood cell apalesia. What does it mean? It means that the bone marrow will not going to be able to produce red blood cells, but the rest of the blood elements are normal. That's red blood cell apalesia. So a, plas a plastic crisis in, in hemolytic Anemia patient, red cell apalesia, an HIV patient infected with parvovirus B19. Let me see if we have this trick here. No. Let me tell you about it. I cannot resist this. Who the other patient who's going to develop red cell apalesia on the exam? Patient with cymoma. So patient with cymoma will get the red cell apalesia. Patient with HIV infection infected with parvovirus B19 will get red cell apalesia on the exam. Okay? So please remember this, we're not going to miss it. 